Here's our question. The complete combustion of octane proceeds according to this balanced equation. We have three sub questions. So part A, how many moles of O2 are needed to burn 1.5 moles of octane? Second, how many grams of O2 are needed to burn 10 grams of octane? Third, octane has this density at 20 degrees Celsius. How many grams of O2 are required to burn 15 gallons of octane? You're welcome to attempt some of this on your own first, then you can hit play and I'll show you how to tackle it on the board. Our part A, suggests that for this balanced chemical equation, we have to make sure that it is balanced before you do this. Conveniently, it is. We're given 1.5 moles of this octane. We're asked, how many moles do you need of O2? How do we do that? Well, we start out by writing down 1.5 moles of octane, and then using the principles outlined in our dimensional analysis slash unit conversion chapter that I'll link to in the description below from a past chapter. The units in the denominator here are going to be the same as the units in the numerator of the previous term. In other words, if I've got moles of octane here, in the denominator, I'm going to have moles of octane as well. The reason is because I want to cancel out those units. Now, the question asks how many moles of O2 we're going to need. Can I directly relate moles of O2 to moles of octane? If so, I can put them in the same set of parentheses. If not, then I can't. So in other words, can moles of one thing and moles of another touch? The answer is yes. Moles and moles can always touch. And as gross as it sounds, I like to imagine a mole on my skin touching a mole somewhere else, a different mole on my skin, you know, moles and moles. And I know it's gross, but if you think of that, the visual will always remind you moles and moles can touch, which means moles and moles can go in the same set of parentheses. As it turns out, grams and grams can never touch, and grams can touch moles if they are of the same substance. But if I've got grams of two different substances, they can never be put in the same parentheses. Moles is the intermediary between grams of one substance and grams of another. So I can put moles of O2 in the numerator. But the next question is, what numbers do I put in there? Ah, the numbers that I put here are the balanced coefficients in the equation. So I got a 2 next to octane. I could put a 2 right there. I got a 25 next to O2. I put a 25 up there. That's what these numbers are for. They're ratios of moles for every single substance, reactant to product. So in other words, for every two moles of octane you run, you got a 25 moles of O2. So I can cross these out, I end up with moles of O2, and the final answer ends up coming to 18.75. Now if you want to be absolutely correct, you'd have to round to the proper number of significant figures according to sig fig rules. I'm going to ignore that right now and just suffice it to say that that is the answer part A. Now we move on to part B. How many grams of O2 do you need to react with? 10.0 grams of octane. Similar fashion, I'm going to start by writing down my 10.0 grams of octane. But now I cannot directly go from grams of this to grams of the other thing, because grams of one thing, grams of another cannot touch. I have to go through moles. Moles and moles can touch. <laughs> grams and grams, uh-uh. So in traditional unit analysis slash dimensional analysis slash unit conversion fashion, my uh, units here in the denominator are going to be the same as my units in the numerator of the previous term. So if I've got grams of CH18 in the numerator here, that's what I got in the denominator. Now, I cannot directly relate or have touch in the same set of parentheses grams of octane with grams of O2. But what can I do? Can I put grams of octane together with moles of octane? In other words, can grams of one thing and moles of the same thing touch? The answer is yes. I could put one mole of octane in the numerator, and I'll figure out what, how many grams that is in just a moment. But if these units cancel each other out, I'm not yet to grams of O2, but you can see I'm getting there. Okay? So I'll lay down another set of parentheses. What units go in the denominator here? Same units as in the numerator of the previous term. So I've got moles of octane in the numerator here, so I'm going to put moles of octane in the denominator here. Now, can you directly relate moles of octane to moles of O2? In other words, can moles and moles touch? The answer is yes, so I'm going to put moles of O2 here in the numerator, no problem. Now, I'm not yet to my answer, but I'm getting really close. I'm to moles of O2. The question asks for grams of O2, so I need to lay down another set of parentheses. What units are going to go in the denominator of this set of parentheses? As always, it's same as the units in the numerator of the previous term, so I'm going to put moles of O2 here in the denominator so that it'll cancel out my moles of O2 there. Can I directly relate or have touch in the same set of parentheses, moles of O2, with grams of O2? The answer is absolutely yes, OK? So put grams of O2. Now, I've got everything going all the way to grams of O2. That's my target units. If I put the numbers in the correct locations and then just punch up my calculator, I should end up with the correct answer. So how many grams of octane are there in one mole of octane? Well, every carbon weighs 12. This is the molecular weight, right? Or the atomic weight for carbon. And there are eight carbons in each molecule of octane. Each hydrogen weighs one. 
and there are 18 hydrogens in this molecule. So I have 12 times eight is 96 plus 18, gives me a molecular weight of 114 for C8H18 for octane. That's 114 grams per mole. In other words, if you have one mole of octane, it weighs 114 grams. Never forget the formula weight or molecular weight that we talked about in an earlier video that's linked to in the description below has units of grams per mole, okay? So for every one mole of octane, I got 114 grams of octane. Now, what about the numbers here? What's the ratio of moles of octane O2? Yeah, that's the coefficients next to those respective substances in the balanced chemical equation. What number do I have next to octane? It's a two, so I'll lay that down there. What about next to the O2? It's a 25, I can throw that down there. Piece of cake, right? Now what about the molecular weight of O2? Well, each oxygen weighs uh, 16, here's my O2, and there are two oxygen atoms per molecule of O2. So each one weighs 16, two times 16 is 32. So one mole of O2 weighs 32 grams. So I multiply all that crap out in my calculator. In other words, I'm going to take 10.0 times by 25 times times by 32. Man, then I divide it by 14 and divide it by 2. Huh, a lot of math. But anyway, I do all of that and I end up getting a final answer of 35 grams of O2. So you can see that for 10 grams of octane, you have to have 35 grams of O2. And that, you know, kind of feels about right as I'm looking at the ratios there. All right? So that is the answer to part B. Now let's move on to part C. Okay, this is as complicated as you're ever gonna see on one of these questions, okay? I got 15 gallons of octane. How many grams of O2 do I need? So using, again, the principles of dimensional analysis slash unit conversion, I'm gonna write down here 15.0 gallons, and I'm abbreviating that with just the letter G-A-L, okay? I want to eventually get to units of grams of O2. So as per usual, I'm gonna write down another set of parentheses, and I'm gonna have to start making my sets of parentheses smaller because there's gonna be a lot of them here, okay? I'm gonna put my units here in the denominator will be the same as my units in the numerator of the previous term, gallons. Now, can I directly relate gallons of one thing to grams of another? I can't think of any conceivable way of doing that. What could I actually relate gallons to? I mean, gallons is a volume. You have a gallon of milk or something. You can picture that. I can directly relate that to liters, I think. And why would I want to do it to liters? Well, the reason is because the problem gives me a density of octane in units of grams per milliliter, right? And liters is not the same thing as milliliters, but it's getting close. So if I could look up, and again on an exam, I would not require you, my students, to memorize this. I would give it to you. But if I could look up and numerically relate gallons to liters, which I'm sure you could do, right? Because there is a certain number of liters. You've held a liter bottle in your hand, probably, in a gallon. So you could, those are relatable, so I could do that. Then I could get a little bit closer, right? So I could put in numbers there, so my gallons cancel each other out. Now, I want to get eventually to milliliters because the question does supply me with a, na a number that's a density for octane in grams per milliliter. So I want to go ahead and lay down another set of parentheses where I'll put liters in the denominator to cancel out my liters in the numerator of the previous term and put down milliliters in the numerator. Again, are liters and milliliters directly relatable? Yes, they are, so that is okay. Now I'll put down another set of parentheses. I'm of course gonna put milliliters in the denominator and this is milliliters that's gonna cancel out this milliliters. And can I directly relate milliliters to grams in this case? The answer is yes, but it's specifically octane. So I'm gonna write down grams. This is grams of octane. It is not grams of O2. We wanna make sure that we don't get that confused because if you write down grams and think you're talking about grams of O2, that's not true because the density supply in this question is grams of octane per milliliter, okay? I'll put the number in there in just a moment. But I've got grams of octane, so in the denominator I'm gonna write down, in fact, to be honest, in order to get this really correct and not mixed up, we want to make sure that we actually write that down. So I'm gonna write down specifically grams of octane, which is C8H18, okay? Because it's really easy if you don't write that down specifically to get confused and think you're talking about grams of something else, okay? So there's a certain number of grams of octane per milliliter of octane. Now in the denominator, I'm of course gonna put down grams of octane again. Is it possible to directly relate grams of octane to grams of O2? In other words, can grams of one substance directly touch grams of another? The answer is no. I have to go directly through, or I have to go through moles. So I could put mo one mole of octane weighs a certain amount, right? One mole of octane weighs a certain number of grams. That's acceptable. 
okay? So we're now into moles of octane, but unfortunately I've run out of board space. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch all this through so we get to moles of octane, and then we'll do another line to get all the way to our grams of O2. Before doing that, of course, I need to write down my numbers. Now, I looked up the conversion between, one, or between liters and gallons, and it turns out that one gallon contains 3.79 liters. And I would not require you, my students, to memorize that. I would give that to you, okay? 3.79 liters in one gallon. Now, liters and milliliters are directly relatable, and I require you, my students, to uh, memorize this. Uh, a liter is big and milliliter is small. There's one liter contains 1,000 milliliters, and I'm writing my thousand kind of a little bit crooked because I don't have enough room there for it. Now, what is the density in grams per milliliter of octane? That's given to us in the question, and the question gives it to us as being 0.692. Now, again, I'm kind of writing it crooked. What that means is that in one gram of octane, or one milliliter of octane, you've got 0.692 grams of octane. Is that okay? Now, how many moles or grams of octane are there in one mole of octane? Well, yeah, as we just found out in our earlier problem, part B, the molecular weight of octane is 114, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and times all of this through, and I should end up with units in moles of octane. And that final answer that I get is gonna come to 345. Okay? Again, you can argue with me on the rounding for significant figure purposes. I'm not really worried about that right now. But the question does not ask me to get to moles of octane. It asks me to get to grams of O2, which means I have to keep going. Now, you could do all this in one big long row if you had wide enough board space or paper space, as the case may be. But I'm not quite there yet. So I'm going to put units in the denominator that are going to be the same as units of the numerator of the previous term, which is moles of octane. Can I directly relate moles of octane to moles of O2? In other words, can moles and moles touch? <laughs> The answer is yes, I can. So I can put moles of O2 up here in the numerator. Question did not ask us for moles of O2, though. It asked us for mole or grams of O2. So I need to lay down another set of parentheses. I'll put moles of O2 in my denominator because I want them to be the same as the units of the previous term so they cancel each other out. Can you directly relate moles of O2 to grams of O2? In other words, can moles of one thing and grams of the same thing touch? The answer is yes. So I'll put grams in the numerator, okay? Moles cancel each other out. Moles cancel each other out here. I just have to put in the numbers, okay? Let's start over here. One mole of O2 weighs how many grams? Yeah, as we just discovered in part B, it's 32. 16 per oxygen, two oxygens per molecule. What about the numbers here? How many moles of octane are there per moles of uh, O2, and where do I get that? Yeah, those numbers are the coefficients in the balanced equation. So there's two moles of octane. Right there, that two, for every 25 moles of O2, okay? That's what those coefficients are good for. They are a ratio of moles to moles for everything reacting into product. I punch all of that in my calculator, end up getting a final answer. 138,035 grams of O2. So you can see that it requires a lot of grams of O2 to react with uh, 15 gallons of octane. Now, if you want, you can rewrite this having the proper number of significant figures, and you can rewrite it with scientific notation as uh, at your discretion. I'm not going to do that right now. I just want to show you the process of how to convert from gallons of one thing to grams of another.